Hi everyone, Jeff Cote here with BoatingTechTalk.com. We have a question from a fellow boater, Mel. Mel says, Jeff, my boat has two motors, two engines. I haven't really investigated, uh, Mel adds, my alternator situation, but I was wondering if the alternator on one motor charges the house batteries and the other engine charges the engine batteries. Okay. What's normal? What to expect? Well, unfortunately, nothing is really normal on a boat because all of us eventually modify boats. So if your boat is, again, from the factory, most installs, and again, this is sort of like these generalities that don't apply to anyone, but since, you know, we're putting context here, in an ideal world, and certainly what I advise many boaters to do, I'll remember, there's always rule exceptions to every rule, but what I advise is that each engine should have its own dedicated engine battery. That's my advice. So if you have two engines, two engine batteries. And I know some of us will have one engine battery do two engines, but I'm, we could take a whole one hour spiel on why. My advice is an engine battery is not that expensive. Have a dedicated engine battery per engine. Now, in this instance, uh, this boater, Mel, talks about not multiple battery banks. He's talking about only two battery banks. So he's got two engines, two alternators, one house battery, one engine battery. Generally, generally, the starter is connected to the alternator. And I mean the starter solenoid. So when you buy an engine straight out of the factory, any factory, any car, if you wire either two engines to one battery, both alternators are gonna be recharging that single engine battery. That's how it would come from the factory. Now, over time, and certainly boat builders and technicians like ourselves, well, what they'll do is they'll intercept one of the alternators, and instead of that alternator recharging and connected to the starter solenoid on the engine, they're going to intercept that power, and they're going to run it to the house batteries. So it is possible, Mel, that on your boat, you have literally two engines, and each engine is connected to its respective battery bank, and they're separate. The best way of testing this, by the way, is not actually following the wiring. The best way is to confirm behavior. So here's how you would confirm Mel, and this is applies to all of us. How would you confirm what is going on in your boat? The first thing is disconnect shore power from your boat. Uh, if you've got solar panels, cover them up. I want no charging voltage at all on your boat. So it can, the only charging voltage you're going to get is from your alternators. If you've got a methanol fuel cell, disconnect it. If you've got a wind turbine, disconnect it. Solar panels, cover them up, disconnect them. But on most cases, most of us don't have all those things. We either have a battery charger and alternators. So that's for most of us. All right, so now that we're disconnecting from shore power, you want to measure the voltage at each battery. So whatever it is, it doesn't really matter absolutely what it is. You just want to know what it is at the meter. And what you're looking for is change. So what you would do is you would start, let's say, for example, the starboard engine. You look at the voltage prior to starting. You start the engine. And now you look at the battery voltage at both the engine battery and the house battery. One of them, or potentially both, the voltage should rise. If it does, then you've confirmed that some way, either your that engine is recharging two batteries, one battery, or none, no batteries. So that's one thing you want to confirm. Because it's possible that you have a battery isolator on this boat. And if you do have a battery isolator, each engine could be recharging two battery banks. But you don't know that, and that's what you're confirming. So you start, you look at the voltage prior to starting the, the engine. And once you start the engine, and by the way, some of these alternators don't output at low RPM. So you might have to rev up to maybe 13, 1400 RPM in idle. Just enough so that the alternator outputs. And measure, and now notice, did the battery voltage at either battery increase? One of them is going to drop down, of course, the one that started the engine. So that's the other thing, too, you're going to confirm. Because as you're starting the engine, you're going to see a battery voltage drop. That battery voltage is dropping before the engine actually ends up running as you're trying to crank it over. That tells you that that engine battery or battery is what's connected to the starter. Check. Next, do it on the port side. Again, now you do it on the port side with the starboard side not running. Because what you want is isolation, right? You're looking for, a you're creating change and you're looking for outcomes, right? So now you do the port side. And again, so 
In this instance, Mel is supposing that one engine is connected to the engine battery and another engine is connected to the house. In this instance, one engine should only recharge the engine battery and the other engine should only recharge the house battery. And Mal should be able to notice those voltages going up and that would be a way for Mal to confirm his assumption. But it's a great way and you don't even need a voltmeter. I mean, like a multimeter, you just need a voltmeter on your panel and obviously all engines should have a voltmeter on the dash. And your house battery has to have a voltmeter. If you don't, you gotta get one. And then just simply, even without a multimeter, look for behavior. Do a change and look for a consequence, right? And that's how you're able to confirm. And this is how I confirm on a lot of our boats when we do electrical audits. That's how I confirm what does what. Not even by looking at the wire, because ultimately, sometimes it's pretty complicated. Looking at behavior, looking at changes. So that's a great question from Mel. And it's not a simple answer because over time, boats have been modified, adapted to meet different needs. But it's good to be curious and good on one to Mel. Again, if you have stories about your boat and how crazy or great it was on your boat and why you like your boat or don't like your boat setup in terms of charging from alternators, post it down below, share. We all learn from that. And this is the purpose of this Boating Tech Talk channel. Thanks for watching, everyone. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching this PYS video. If you've got further questions, please ask them below or send us an email via the contact forms on our website. Happy to donate my time to share information with you. You can support us in keeping this channel ad-free by purchasing some merchandise on our store or by making a donation on PayPal. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again for watching.